So the first method we're going to talk about for solving a quadratic equation is based on the zero product principle, or the old ZPP. Um, and the, Z, the, the old ZPP says if uh, you have a times b, so if a times b equals zero, then either a equals zero or b equals zero. So what we're saying is if there's multiplication involved and it equals zero, then one of those things that you're multiplying, one of the factors, has to equal zero. Okay? That's the zero product principle. So the only way to get zero in multiplication is to have one of the factors be zero. Okay, so now that leads us to solving by factoring. So I have this quadratic equation right here. It's in standard form. Note that it's set to zero. That's important. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to factor this trinomial. Now, you might have to review factoring, practice factoring, or go back to the section where we talked about factoring if you need to. But I need two numbers that multiply to be 10 and add to be negative 7. Those two numbers will multiply to be 10. You might remember things like this in the video. And multiply to be 10, add to be negative 7. It's negative 2 and negative 5. That will work. That multiplies to be a positive 10 and adds to be a negative 7. Okay. So that gives me factors of x minus 2 and x minus 5. And so I have factored the left-hand side of the equation. But now I have multiplication, right? I have a binomial times a binomial equaling 0. So either this equals 0, either x minus 2 equals 0, or x minus 5 equals 0. And so in this case, we're going to get two solutions. You just solve. This is now a linear equation, so it's this one. Um, and we just solve those. You know, here we're going to add 2 to both sides. So you get x equals 2. And here you're going to add 5 to both sides. Then you get x equals 5. So there are two solutions to this equation. And the solutions are 2 and 5. So now I'm going to give you the steps for solving um, by factoring. Step 1. You have to have it set to 0. So it has to be in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. It has to be set to 0. Then you're going to factor the quadratic expression, or in our case, the left-hand side, right? Then you're going to set each factor to 0. Remember, factors are things that we're multiplying. And um, then you solve the linear equations. And finally, you have to write the answer. They like you to check it as well. But I don't always check everything. That's a good idea, too. Okay, so just a quick little example here. Say you had something like x plus 2 times 3x minus 5 times uh, x minus 7. And then you had 3x in front of all that, and it equaled 0. Now, it's already factored here. Thank goodness, because this would have been really difficult to factor. and we're not. It would have been beyond a quadratic equation. But you would set each factor to 0. So how many factors are there? There's 3, there's x, there's x plus 2, 3x minus 5, and x minus 7. So which, you know, which ones can be 0? Can 3 be 0? No, so no solution there. But x could be 0. That would be one solution. Here, x could be negative 2. That would make that factor 0. Here, x could be 5 thirds. So that would be another solution. And here, x could be 7. Now, you can write those out. So you can say, sometimes students like for the first one, they like to put 3x equals 0, but you don't really need the 3. But that's how you would get that. The other one, you know, you'd subtract the 2, right? Okay, and this one might be a little bit harder, but you're saying, when does 3x minus 5 equal 0? Um, and so you'd add the 5, and then you'd have to divide by 3. This is like a little review here of some of the earlier work we've been doing. And then the last one, you'd say x minus 7 equals 0, 
then you'd add 7 to both sides to get that answer. So there's actually four answers for this one. You're not going to have one like this because, this, like I said, this is not quadratic, but I was just trying to get us to think a little bigger in, in a situation like that. Okay, so don't, don't worry too much about that.